Here we are once again for another edition of the award-winning, at least in our minds, <laughs> Midnight Blue and Gold Launchpad Podcast. I am Rocket Ryan Brandt. I am PJ Spiller, a.k.a. Pagelic. I am Dan Rocketman Savage. And I'm Kyle W. And I believe we came in second at the Highland Appliance Award Ceremony. No that's, way. That's right. We were uh, close. We were, were you like there su- in person? No, I wasn't. We were like Susan Lucci. I sent in second. I sent Nate. <laughs> oh, Nate was there. Well, oh, Texas yeah. Rocket. Well, didn't was there. they have it down in Waco? Is yeah. that where the Highland yeah, Appliance Awards yeah. were? It's the, the last one, kind of like the last Rax is down in Lancaster, Ohio. It's at the local Holiday Inn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was at the Ramada. That <laughs> might need... Or Howard Johnson's. Little Hojo. <laughs> they like the circle. Little Hojo around. in Waco. <laughs> Hojo in Waco. Like it. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come to. Hear a bunch of shenanigans. Well, you kind of do. Of course, you, uh, yeah. if if you know us, you like us. The shenanigans will work their way in, but we shouldn't lead with the shenanigans. We should lead with the women of Trisha Cullop. And, man, they're playing some great basketball. On to the third round, the quarterfinals of the WBIT, where they go out to Pullman, Washington, to take on the Washington State Cougars on Thursday night, 9 o'clock Toledo time. Be there, watch that game, because this team is playing really well right now. I mean, they played St. John's from the Big East uh, uh, the other night. and What it, a game. It, it, they got behind early. Uh, St. John's was shooting the lights out. Uh, it was one of those games where, I, I don't know, I had the confidence at halftime that, you know, we're a second-half team. Trisha knows how to coach them up, and they're resilient. They're resilient as hell. And, I mean, I think Trisha said that in her post-game conference. First – or press conference. First thing I thought when the game was over, God, this team just does not continue to fight. You know, it, it, and when somebody else doesn't – you know, one of the one of the main players or starters doesn't step up, you've got Hannah Novorossi coming off the bench and having a hell of a game. 13 points, 10 rebounds. I mean, I was just so amazed. And she – that was the first time I've seen her look really athletic. That one little reverse layup, I'm like, man, where'd she come up with that? That's pretty sweet. She has to lead the nation in like points per minute. She only plays like 18 minutes, and 13 points seems like yeah. her average now. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was one of those games where you know this. I was like, wow, St. John's is really good. It felt like we were behind the whole game. We only lost one quarter. We got pounded in the second quarter. Started the second half with a seven point run, and then all is history. That crowd got behind them. All we needed to do was make it, you know, two possession game, and we knew that we had a chance at the end. And, uh, yeah, they St. John's continued to shoot well throughout the game, but we finally hit some shots there in the fourth quarter and pulled away, and now we're on the, our way to the Elite Eight. The Elite elite Eight of the WBIT, which is a step – it's owned by the NCAA. It's a step above the WNIT. So it's nice that they, they're they getting the recognition that they should have gotten from the NCAA tournament. We are the only MAC basketball program, men's or women's, still, still alive. Yeah, so – Nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with carrying the Mac for the rest of the season. You know what's interesting is uh, Hannah, you know, really taking over in the fourth in that game. I really thought that was going to happen with the Buffalo game with the mismatch down low because nobody is even close to yeah. her being 6'5". And I, I get you. You have certain lineups on the floor for defense, but, you know, it would have been interesting to see if they would have used their bigs a little bit more in that game if they would have went on a little bit farther in the Mac tournament. That's a really good point. Yeah, we well, got to find her with good entry passes where she's open. Sometimes right. we try to run in the lane and like almost like no look pass to her. That's not going to work for her or, her or Jess. Get her in no. the post, get her posted up. Yeah, she get the offense set up and make a move. Yeah, yeah. right. Because if, if it's on a break or a, or a no look pass or something like you said, chances are she's going to be she's going to be bodied up and it's not. It's not yeah, gonna be or, able. or she'll fumble it. She's got to go so much further to get the ball. Right. So yeah, just get well, it to her hands. And I don't know if I'm mistaken or not, but. Didn't St. John's pretty much employ four small guards, four guards and one center? That's kind of just what they do. They've got yeah. they had three guards score all their points pretty much against yeah. Florida, and man, we saw why they could really shoot. Oh yeah, they can shoot the hell out of the ball. Well, what's interesting with Dan's point is, uh, you know, if you do let those bigs set up, even Jessica Cook, she's pretty aggressive in the, on the post. But they both her and Hannah have great footwork. So if you allow her to get the position, she's probably going to get an easy two. 
it, it was just questionable though because we'll we'll think that and then all of a sudden we miss three bunnies in a yeah, row. Yeah, that happens <laughs> almost every game. And then they'll make a ridiculous, you know, reverse layup, and you're like, "Where the hell I'll is s- that?" I'll still take the probability though on that. <laughs> oh, shot. Oh, absolutely, here. you're right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the probability of that shot is is much higher. But I mean, there's a there's a lot of times where, I mean. Jess has got amazingly strong hands. When when she gets the ball, you're not taking it from her. So, and and if she, if she get in a position to put it up off the glass, you know, we, normally we're good, but yeah. things happen. Well, you know, Sammy, what can you say about her? Oh. Once again, 17 points, seven rebounds, three block shots. I mean, that's a nice complete game. And well, her blocks at the end were huge. Mm-hmm. They came at the best times. I mean, I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, but, no, no, please. But, you know, they, they were at a prime time and at big moments. And I think I think you're seeing the evolution of Sammy. Mm-hmm. You know, she's coming back next year. We, we, we sat at the games and thought, you know, whose team is this going to be next year? Is it going to be Kara Goss's team? Is it going to be Sammy's team? And I think it's going to be a nice it's going to be a nice mix of having that and in, in, in the people that are on the bench coming in and whoever we can get in the transfer portal. But Sammy was lights out. And we know we have got two great local freshmen coming in, too, that yes. are going to help at the point guard spot, at least. And then Caden Stikes, I'm sure, will mix in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but a quick little shout out to Danny's and Rossford. They had a watch party for Sammy, and they were live tweeting me the whole game. That's awesome. That's the, yeah. I mean, they've been very supportive all year. Yeah, oh, we'd, yeah. we'd yeah. like you to be in the stadium, but heck, a, a watch party, we're drinking some beers, head over to the casino after. Hey, that's awesome yeah. too. I think right. maybe we should talk to Danny's and see if we can do a little little negotiations about. <laughs> I, I've heard they're going through a large renovation, so they might be a larger establishment here soon. There you go. Yep, yep. They're uh, in fact they're they're one of my clients. I'd like to. Well, maybe we can have them on the show. Yeah, there you go. We'll get uh, get Brad Brad Morrison, the uh, former coach at Rossford. Great Come name, on. Danny's. Yeah. I love it. I know it's got a nice ring <laughs> to it, doesn't it? What? Oh yeah. That's... You know another thing about the end of that, uh, they, at the end of the game when they called timeout, inbound in the forecourt, and when they went to do the inbound. Trisha sent two players down into the defensive zone. Oh yeah, to spread Way that down. thing out, and and it's like we're like, what's going on here? The first time they did it, it was a great call. And I think St. John's was thinking the same thing. What the hell are they doing? Yeah, because if you hedge too much, you throw it over the top, and it's an easy layup. So that's right. a that's a tough one to defend. And that last play, that inbound, we got it in quick, and then Q just saved our butts with that <laughs> little. Little hook pass to Sammy hook and pass. dribbled it out. Yep. Oh yeah, on the, on, the, on the final inbound, that was yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they, that, tell you that, what. that final inbound, I, my nails were gone. They were all <laughs> chewed off. Well, I was uh, sitting between uh, Paulie Newman, Keith Dunbar, and I said, "Man, we're standing there at the end. Eighteen dollars. This is worth every penny of this. This is great live entertainment. Why would you not want to be here?" Yeah, yeah, I mean, they had a decent crowd, what, 35, 3,600? It's, it's officially 2,500, but Dan, how did it look See, from I, up there? So it's just because there's no student tickets and all the suites weren't full. I think usually if you have season tickets in the suites, you, they just count every ticket that's right, up there regardless right. of who's there. Gotcha. And the lights were off in some of them, so that's fine. But, I mean, the main bowl was full. The, main, the lower just bowl was full. Yeah. yeah. And I, I listened to the first half of the game when I was at work with uh, Jim Heller on – uh, WCWA twelve thirty a.m. on your radio dial. Always a good choice. <laughs> That's right. And he said that he he approximated the crowd at about thirty five hundred. So which is just probably normally what we yeah call that crowd. Right. right. If the lower bowl's full with a few empty seats, it's about thirty five hundred to four thousand. And it, it was real odd when they kicked off the lights to start the game and they played St. John's promotional video. Oh, I was, did they? I didn't go to the Thursday game. No, it, so they, they had like cheerleaders there for Cleveland State. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, wait, what, well, they had the pep new... band there for yeah. Cleveland State, too. right? Yeah, and I was like, is this a new video? I'm like, oh, it's St. John's, is shit. and then yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're trying to make it. A, kind they're of trying a to neutral... make it like yeah, like a neutral floor kind of situation. And then yeah, when they would score, it'd be like mayo for three. Well, <laughs> they did that in the Cleveland State game. We, we, we were sitting there, and they were like three point. Three point field goal, C L E, and we're all like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> but come on, Kev. Come they on. did a nice little number. St. John's maybe brought two people. I don't know. They'd be like, "Let me hear it if you're a St. John's fan," and then you know, crickets, and then mm-hmm. let's hear it for T O L. They just pump in that stadium you, noise from you, the you just hear, you just hear it. <laughs> <laughs> one person from the back of the stadium. No, but Cleveland State brought a nice crowd. Yeah, they That's, they probably had maybe a couple hundred people. 
You know what? One thing I thought about, you know, I said to both Keith and Pauly, you got to really keep Mayo from scoring because if you don't, you're going to have to play catch up. Oh, my God. I knew that was coming. And then that, good uh, lord! Then they had can, another player. Kyle, can you just uh, shut his mic off? <laughs> Unique Drake. I said that's an original name. I like it. Anyway, that's all I have tonight. I'm here all night, folks. Tip your waiters and waitresses and try the veal. The uh, veal is horrible, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, say we had 2,500 fans there. Fine. Washington State only had a couple hundred their last. Did game. they really? They played Santa Clara. They had 500, 600. Um, the difference isn't going to be their crowd that probably makes a difference. It's, it's going to be, be their size. It, well, and it's going to be the lack of our crowd. And yeah. you know what? Maybe we do fly a charter out there. We've got it, you know, 30, 50 fans making noise. That'll be huge if you can get out there. Yeah. Go out 30 support. or 50 out of a couple hundred? Yeah. yeah that makes a big difference. Yeah, so let's, near let's, let's reach out to all the people that are large donors to the program. <laughs> well, you know charter funny. those was, flights. Paulie and I were up in the uh, the, the Grogan room. Yeah, yeah, we're up there uh, having having dinner beforehand or lunch, and I was looking back at the um, the kind of crowds that St. John's had at home games this year. I'm like, oh, here against Villanova, they had 480. Oh, against Providence, 310. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, their but- biggest crowd was at Madison Square Garden. They had 12 seven. But that had to be a part of a doubleheader with oh, the men. And and I'm well, and also look at their games against UConn. I don't care where you're at. UConn's going to draw yeah, huge. You're right. Yeah, I and mean, the Florida crowd they That's played at point. before was also like a meager four or five hundred. So right. we we gave them a little bit of culture shock there in the end, and it pushed us over the edge. Yeah, that kept it kept them inspired though. I mean, the fact to come out and play in front of a crowd like that. You yeah, know, that yeah, absolutely. Something to get them fired up. But I mean, looking at Washington State, I mean, Trisha, you know, she she spoke to it a little bit on on her uh, press game or post game press conference. Uh, she said they saw the team in Greece at the same airport when they were transferring. And she said, I looked at their team and she said, it, it felt like every one of them was bigger than me. And she's six, <laughs> two or six, yeah. three. Yeah. You know, and, and I looked up their roster after I heard that comment and they are large and in charge. So um, it's going to be, it's going to be an effort for our fives. It'd our, be interesting uh, if we ran like uh, Buffalo did against us and just ran small and just Ran them out. Yeah, run, you know, yeah, fast run pace. them out. But, I mean, they've got 6-1 guards. Yeah. You know, I mean, 6-2 guards. <laughs> we're going to have to shoot well from three. We've been in the below 30% yeah. our last, like, six games. We're going to have to hit shots there yeah. to have a chance. And that's that's been the only thing that's been troubling me with their last few games is we're not shooting well from outside at all. But we're getting looks. We're running the we're, offense. We're getting, yeah. It's just like We're getting falling. good looks. They're just not falling. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, I'm just going to give you a little recap of their schedule. They defeated Gonzaga, Maryland, South Dakota State, Arizona, UCLA, Colorado. They're a very good team. They defeated UCLA and Colorado yeah. along with – so all those teams are still yeah. alive in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Um, Their net was 29 and they were left out of the NCAA tournament. So you think we have yeah, a they beef? Have, they have a bigger bitch <laughs> yeah. than we do. Um, again, hey, hey, don't talk about their girls like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure they went, you know, into the postseason with a 17 and 14 record. And I, you know, I hate when the Power Five teams get in like that. Yeah. They but, get a lot of good wins. Yeah. Um, their RPI is behind Toledo's though at 42. And Toledo's RPI has jumped up to 31 the last few games, which the, is which is why Trisha said it's bullshit having the right the, the net net instead of the RPI. Yeah, I, I, and they, they, the powers that be need to make some adjustments. You know, I don't know where this net came from. Oh, it's it's all a, a way to get the I power mean, teams uh, in but, there. But but who created it? Was it NCAA? Was it some guy like Sagrin? You know, with the RPI when he first started he out, probably told that Sankey knucklehead, "Hey, listen." Yeah. Look at if we yeah. do, if we do yeah. this, we can get, get more, more SEC teams, teams yeah. in the tournament. But no, I, I, I think there need, needs to be a better way to evaluate teams, you know, abilities to continue to win or, or to make a difference in the tournament. You know, somehow they can come up with a an algorithm that you know, okay, they started off the team the season horrible, but they're rolling now. They're fourteen straight home wins, fourteen, you know, seventeen straight wins overall. Yeah, and and even when you make it, although I do like this for the women's tournament, maybe now we're changing a little bit. The women's tournament, the top four seeds host for the first two games. These mid majors are going to have a tough time knocking off 
power teams on the road if they're f- seated like an 11, 12, 13. Yeah, you, you're playing Tennessee at Tennessee right. or Notre Dame at Notre Dame you know, or Stanford at Stanford you, 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 or UConn. Sure. Jeez, you, know, <laughs> you have, I mean, James Madison coming in. Looks good on paper, but my God, you're playing in front of 14,000 people and you, your yeah. biggest game all year is 2,500. Yeah, so, you know, the, we did the tournament right, this tournament right. We got to host our two games. That's what we... That's what we bargained for. Right. Now we got to go out. We got to knock off the one seed. Um, Toledo is two and one all time against Washington State. We beat them in like 99, 2000, which was two of the best teams in Toledo history. Yes. And then Aunt Kell's team lost in the Rainbow Classic back in the day, but she had 22 points. So there right. you go. Yeah, those savages, they come to play. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Whether it's on the basketball court back in the 80s or in the man cave when Dan, her nephew, shows up. Hell yeah. Uh, but, shout out to I think North Coast Rocket on the message board for that. Your stats, man, love it. He came up with that. Yeah, I, wow. I think I think he said he keeps his own stats. Like he goes back and compiles his own box scores. I wonder if his name's Tim Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Hood was a guy with who worked as uh, at uh, WXUT back in the day. And this guy, pre-internet, pre any kind of fantasy, was in a rotisserie baseball league. And, and they had to get all their stats out he of got USA all Today. His, yeah, all his stats out of USA Today and local newspapers. And That's he, a full-time job. Oh, dude, it is. he had a notebook just full of stats and pages and pages. And I'm like, uh, I'm that's almost insane. I'm exhausted looking at it. Yeah, just looking at it. Nerd. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our kind of nerd, they got it, right? <laughs> a sports nerd. That's right. So, good luck to the ladies. Yeah, I mean, your thoughts, guys, on the game coming up in in, in Pullman? You know what? Why not us? That's the way I look at it. Right. That's that's my, I that's think my I, basic. I mean, the the way they've played all year, I think they deserve this. And I think she, the, the coach, the coaching staff, the team, like she said, is resilient as hell. I think if any team is, is up to the challenge, it's these guys. And if we these get These women, that, I'm sorry. If we get this win Monday at Hinkle Fieldhouse – for the final four, and then Wednesday for the championship game, also at Hinkle Fieldhouse. So historic home. Yeah, we'd have a home crowd. You yeah, know? you never I'm, know. Yeah, I think a lot of people will travel to Indy for those. Oh, for sure. And it's like I said, it's historic because that is where they played the championship game in the movie Hoosiers. That's right. And it's where they used to play the state championship games back in the day. Um, in fact, that was kind of cool back in. Uh, oh hell, what year was it? Probably oh one, oh two. Uh, Butler was in the same conference with Wright State, the Horizon League. And uh, Wright State went there and knocked them off. And so I used that clip from when he, he measures from – Gene oh. Hackman has a measure from the <laughs> – just like it's – From it's the like rim our, to the floor. Just like our hoop back at Hickory. Ten foot, baby. And so so Coach made me make a copy of it. Have you looked at all at the at the bracket going forward, who the possibilities if they get through this game? I don't like to look forward, but – Illinois is on our side, so that would be the big dog. Also, would probably bring a, a lot of fans. Yeah. Well, also depends on what their men are doing too. Their fan base could be right split. Yeah, and then Washington State's men just fell out, so they might get a little boost here this weekend. But you, you never know. Yeah, you never know. And I know it's a homecoming for Brian Blair. That's where he uh, associate AD out there before he came and joined us. Yes, so, sir. Uh, yeah, hopefully, you know he's he's brought us nothing but good luck. So hopefully, uh, he'll he'll, keep he'll it going. continue to get. Get that job done. You got her. You got her. So good luck. Nine o'clock Thursday night on ESPN Plus. Any idea, real quickly, where the semifinals and finals are they going to be on ESPN or a real channel? I think the semis are going to be on U because they promoted it as Plus U and Two. I think, yeah. um, and then I believe the finals will be on the higher version, either Two or regular ESPN. Okay, yeah, because it is NCAA associated. So I think and it's a Monday. So what else is going to be on? No more men for that right. day. Right. So, cool. All right. Moving forward. Moving on to the men. We've we've got some openings on the roster. Got some spots open. Yeah. Raheem Moss entered the transfer portal along with Tyler Cochran. And today we found out Dante Maddox is going. So there's three-fifths or, let's see, doing my math, um, 60% of my of the starting lineup. I knew it would come to Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there goes your starting lineup, three three fifths of them, and uh, you know, thank goodness we still have Javen Simmons, and uh, got a Sonny. strong freshman class. Yeah, but uh, yeah, just um, after watching the MAC tournament, it would be it'd be nice just to get a nice six eleven guy in there, semi athletic. Is that too much to ask? See, I can't tell because back in the day before uh, 
players were getting paid, you had most of your starting roster leave. It was a sure sign that there might be something going on with the coach. Yeah. Now, I don't know. You know, these players are good enough to play at a bigger school. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to go get paid. Well, I, th- I think you might have a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of that, but you'll also have players that have played on this team for multiple years. They've won the championship. I mean, Tyler they, it would but, be what his fourth school or something. Yeah, I mean, like, shit, he's, all, he's he has about he's another a eight, man. he has another eight max schools to choose from. Come on, come on, yeah. go, you know. Hopefully, <laughs> no, but, but hopefully, be able to transfer one more time, make it five. Not only that, but they're playing on a team that's won multiple regular season championships, but they can't get to the dance. Sure. So there's got to be some frustration there from those players, you know, along with money. But I don't, I. Personally, I don't think a guy like Cochran and his body size and his game is going to step up a level. I do find it interesting. You, we're seeing those rumors with Utah State. Yeah, with and, Coach uh, Kowalczyk. Yep, and uh, you start seeing these players hit the transfer portal. Yeah, yeah it, it could be all tied for right. sure. Yeah, I saw a, a jihad from uh, Ball State. There was a Ball State posted a graphic. It said, come home, and it was to Peyton Sparks. The, the transfer out of Ball State to Indiana might be coming back to Ball State. I saw you. I thought I saw he was. So maybe that you never know. We maybe we're going to get back a guy. Maybe maybe Cochran's going back to Ball State. You never know. It's just right. crazy times, right? Right. Now. And, and I, but I wouldn't also be surprised to see a guy like Cochran get into the portal, not get a lot of interest, and say, you know, screw it, I'm coming back. Or yeah. go up to Oakland. Hell, that might be a good spot for. Him. <laughs> I mean, that's that's today's not a game. bad place to play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> today's game right now is just test the free agency, quote unquote. Yeah, pretty much, and that's what it seems like. Well, the good thing is there was four freshmen on this team that all played a decent amount for a Todd Kowalczyk team. That, that doesn't happen much. That core of four, Lewis, Ford, Simmons, I mean, we're going to be... Yeah, if you can keep them together. Just, I, we might be a little small if we But play four, maybe we but, can grab somebody yeah. in the portal who's got some size and a little bit of athletic ability. You know? Yeah, I'd like to keep that core together. They're very athletic and could be the future of Toledo basketball. That's where the NIL team, or the NIL you know co-ops come in and mm-hmm. kind of make that reassurance that it can happen hopefully yeah and we all i mean who knows maybe white or burchick jumps in the portal i don't know yeah well, i heard white's gone uh, white's gone oh, geez. Okay. yeah he, i believe he was in the portal last week man so i i don't think i don't know about burchick i have no... it's just it's hard at this level especially basketball to retain players oh yeah yeah because i mean Look at look at what Ray J did this year. I mean, he left to go to to Baylor. He obviously got a great NIL deal to go there, but he's also raised his stock in the NBA draft. He had twenty seven points in their losing effort this yeah. weekend, and, um, and he impressed a lot of people mm-hmm. in the in those two games. Yeah. And one thing you can't take away, he has that diploma from the University of Toledo. Exactly, and he actually played here. I'm he's like a graduate. <laughs> so, but then you you look at other players, you know. I, I don't know how much Raheem, how much noise Raheem Moss is going to make in the market. He might find it a better deal somewhere. Uh, but I think a player like Devin Maddox can go out there or Devin. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. No, I mean, that, he's a, he's a shooter. So yeah, he can go out there and raise his stock. Yeah. For sure. Is it, no, is it Dante? Dante. <laughs> well, Devin. He's, yeah. He's, he might get drafted. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot going on there. The rumors with Todd going to Utah State are, are all strictly rumors at this point. 100%. So, I mean, we brought that up. It's, it's something we've seen on the on the message boards the last couple of days. Um, Just something we like to talk about because the, the fans are obviously seeing right. it too. So. And, and I mean, at this point, you know, I, I don't know how much of a great move that is for him to go to Utah State. Yeah, the Mountain West can get five teams in. He can get into a, ter- a tournament. But does he want to uproot his kids? Yeah, that's that's the interesting thing is uh, during his interview, I thought it was really endearing the fact that he talked about it was really nice to have our kids in one school district. The whole time yeah. they've been here. They're not military kids, essentially, just moving right, around. Right. And, and, I mean, his son's a great player for St. John's. Yeah, I know I wouldn't want to move out to Utah. They're not a very good bar scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, I, I mean, I think they still have three-two beer out there, from what I hear. You're looking, you're looking at, that a kid's going to probably start getting some looks from D1 programs. True. 
Yeah, he already and, has. He's uh, he's had an offer from uh, UC Irvine and and the Toledo Rockets. Oh, I amazing! Right state yeah. as well, I think too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, do you want to uproot your family at this point? I mean, it, 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 who knows what's going through his head? So, it, like we said, it's all it's all rumor conjecture at this point, but. I don't know what today's uh, high school landscape is, but when I was in high school, it was all about AAU. And oh yeah, some of That's the teams true. you're playing with them. That's true, but you're 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 taking your family cross country. One hundred percent, yeah. It's, you know the AAU teams around here. Are it's pre- disappointing to you. I don't know what grade he's in, but I think he's a sophomore. It's got to be. Yeah, an he upper might be the, He might be the best player in the state of Utah if he goes there. It's not really a known for a basketball high school right. state, right? So I mean, yeah, you, you you take that into consideration, but then with the transfer portal, I mean, hopefully they can hit that hard and and help out the this freshman slash sophomore class coming back next year. Yeah, and uh, just to add on to that, uh, Bowling Green's coach was at Utah Valley last year, so that kind of right. seems like a fit. But he's only been there at Bowling Green a year, but you know, never, who knows? Yeah, who knows. All right, and uh, while we're at it, uh, the Pro Day. Did we talk about Pro Day yet? Uh, I don't think we have talking about Pro so, Day So, uh, had a nice contingent. 32 different teams were there. I mean, all 32 uh, uh, teams. Yeah, all 32 teams say. were there and so, fully course, represented. Yeah, Nate, Nate Bauer, Judge Culpepper, Dallas Gant, Devin Maddox, uh, Chris McDonald, David Nagugu, uh, Devin Rogers, Nick Rossi, and Terrence Taylor all participated. And, of course um, – I, I I don't think that um, those are the ones that participated. Quinion was there, but did not he did participate. not because he's done all he can. Yeah, do. he was just there for support for the other guys, and you know he has nothing left to prove. I mean, I've heard everywhere from fifteen to a top five pick for him now. So why even go out there and stress yourself? Exactly. But I also heard there was a few former Rockets that were that performed that day, one or two years out of the program. I don't know who they were. And there was a few other college players from the Northwest Ohio area, whether it was, you know, BG, Finley, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what players were there, but it would have been nice to see a roster of everybody who was there. What's, what's interesting is we brought this up a little bit on the refuel and Nate was talking about how Ewers was uh, throwing for Texas and Dan brought up it's kind of like whatever QB the receivers kind of prefer. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really interesting for Nebraska. Riola was throwing for them. and Dylan Riola, really? He – He's not even a freshman yet. You know what I mean? He's I obviously going to start this year. but yeah. so high school? Yeah. Well, he's early enrollee, but yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. So, yeah, I, I know there was quite a few players there and uh, a few really good performances from what I heard. Yeah, and Gant really sound like he really sh- – sounds like he really shown his talents, you know. He uh, – just from what he did, I don't have any of the stuff in front of me, but uh, no, but I, and I think Judge well. had a, had a really good day as well. Anyone on the defensive side of the ball, there's proof in the pudding with guys we've put in the NFL. There's probably a, a f- more than a few that could potentially play at the next level, whether it's Canada, USFL, or the NFL. Um, we might be a little undersized, especially on our D line, but those guys are very, very productive in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean. Uh, I don't know. It's not the USFL anymore, but or the US. What it, what, is it the USL United? I think the XFL merged to become the USFL. Is that yeah. right? No, they, they merged with the USFL to become something else. I thought it was to become the just just the USFL. Yeah, I believe that's still the. Oh, entity. is it? Yeah. Okay, the WNBA. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's ringing a bell. It's like basketball. <laughs> but uh, you know, we we could put a few players into that league for sure. Well, Reggie Howard, uh, former Rocket defensive lineman, mm-hmm. is playing for him and. Happy birthday to him today. He's uh, saw on Facebook where he uh, had a birthday. So happy birthday, Devin! There you go, um, Reggie. Reggie. Oh, hey, you're Devin really Reggie. stuck on Devin. I am stuck on Devin. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, uh, Devin, we just hired a guy named Devin. Devin at my work, so it's been stuck in my in my head all day. Stuck in your crawl, as they say. Yes. So, Kyle, how are we looking? Are we um, think we can. We uh, got a healthy 29 minutes in. All right. By the time we do all our. Uh, See you later, bullshit. We should be out here right around thirty. Well, and we also have to, you know, plug our uh, our Highland Appliance uh, sponsorship. That's right. Uh, they were pretty disappointed we didn't do it last episode, and you know our our sponsorship money's 
going in the basement at this point. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna pull it. I feel they're like gonna pull the, they're gonna pull the plug any day. It's been decreasing since we started. I feel like something's going on with them. Some, yeah, you, you know, they, know, might, they may go out of business if we don't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look good it. for them. There's their stability is not on you know not on point right the now. The future is not bright for Highland Appliance. You know what? I I heard Circuit City is coming into the business. Oh, so that's a, that's a nice get. <laughs> I tried emailing them. I haven't heard anything back. Yeah, I, but I, if we can get Circuit City, that'll be a great get. I get I get this weird bounce back email something about I don't know it didn't go through I don't know what that means. I just I just heard try harder is what I <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you everyone once again for listening tonight uh, it's it's been a pleasure you know working with with all these guys and, and getting through this basketball season and we're still not done yet let's go Trisha and that's right Lady Rockets that's right let's win this one on. Thursday night, move on to Hinkle Fieldhouse and see what happens from there. On behalf of engineer producer Kyle W. Smith, engineer producer extraordinaire. Oh, thank Kyle you. There w. you go. Smith. Thank you. I'm Definition. Rocket Ryan. I am PJ Spiller. I am Dan Rocket Man Savage. Have a good night, everybody. T O L. E D O.